I am Dr. Deborah Hellyer. I am a consulting physician with the Occupational Health Clinics for Ontario Workers. I am introducing this video because of the importance of taking a work history on our patients that are seen on a day-to-day -day basis in our practices. This video titled Work History and the Relevance to Medical Practice emphasizes the importance of keeping track of a work history by utilizing an occupational health questionnaire. This is an important tool to help prevent occupational disease and to help educate workers with respect to health hazards. We have developed a one-page questionnaire for the patient to fill out and it is to be kept as part of the medical record. This video will show two cases showing the relationship of workplace exposures and the development of occupational diseases. The first case study demonstrates a patient who was referred to the occupational health clinic by their referring physician with a diagnosis of lung disease and the question whether or not it was associated with their workplace exposures. Mr. Smith filled out the occupational health questionnaire at his doctor's office. He was then referred to the Occupational Health Clinics for Ontario Workers to determine if his lung cancer is work-related. Yes, how may I help you? Okay, and um, what is the nature of your problem? Mr. Smith was interviewed by the occupational hygienist to investigate and record a detailed work history which revealed he first had worked in construction as a road paver for 17 years. He then started working in a chrome plating plant and has been there for the past 20 years. When you work as a road paver, you're exposed to polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which is a group of over 100 chemicals. Asphalt is a mixture of mineral, aggregate, and bitumen. Bitumen is composed primarily of highly condensed polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, sulfur, and several heavy metals. There are also diesel exhaust concerns, as well as an increased risk of skin cancer for any outdoor workers. Now, working in a chrome plating facility has many hazards. Hexavalent chromium has been identified as a carcinogen by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, resulting in an increased risk for lung cancer. The mission of the International Agency for Research on Cancer is to coordinate and conduct research on the causes of human cancer. IARC has grouped substances according to their carcinogenicity. Group 1, the agent is carcinogenic to humans. Examples are benzene and asbestos. Group 2A, the agent is probably carcinogenic to humans. Examples are trichloroethylene and diesel engine exhaust. Group 2B, the agent is possibly carcinogenic to humans. Examples are acrylonitrile and carbon black. Group 3, the agent is not classifiable as to its carcinogenicity to humans. Examples are caffeine and hydrogen peroxide. Group 4, the agent is probably not carcinogenic to humans. Chromium is also a respiratory tract irritant and is known to cause allergic contact dermatitis. It can also cause sores in the nose and lead to a perforation of the nasal septum. Because of the latency of some diseases, keeping track of an occupational history is critically important. Some jobs or processes are not performed anymore and the specifics are often forgotten. An example of previous employment and the latency of disease is highlighted in the case of chimney sweeps. Young boys were employed to enter and clean out chimneys. After a period of 20 to 25 years, many of these workers developed cancer of the skin and of the scrotum due to exposure of the carcinogenic chemicals in the soot of the chimneys. Keeping track of an occupational history at a worker's young age will allow for the details and exposures to be documented. In this case, the worker experiences dizziness, lightheadedness, and fatigue while performing her job duties. She has many exposures in her workplace, including acrylonitrile, isocyanates, and solvents. Acrylonitrile is classified by IARC in Group 2B as a possible human carcinogen and is a designated substance in Ontario. Other designated substances include arsenic, asbestos, benzene, coke oven emissions, ethylene oxide, isocyanates, lead, mercury, silica, and vinyl chloride. From the two examples, you can see how the Occupational History Questionnaire is an important tool to help aid in the prevention of occupational disease. It is also a way to educate workers of the health hazards associated with their specific occupation 
and the materials they are working with. Other occupational health resources include Canadian Centre for Occupational Health and Safety at www.ccohs.ca and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health at www.cdc.gov forward slash NIOSH forward slash.